Hello everybody, welcome to the tube, a lot going on, here's our lineup. Yes, it's regulation trouble for Uber again now in Hong Kong. Vox Media and BuzzFeed get big money from NBC Universal. Big funding for the Israeli startup behind huge hit hap Facetune. The science guy gets the crowdfunding world all hot and excited. And another online short sci-fi video bought by the Warner Bros. Let's blast into space. Boom. Uber is continuing its amazing strike of upsetting local regulators around the world. This time we travel to Hong Kong where you can even order a helicopter through the Uber app. Three Uber employees have been released on bail yesterday after a raid on the company's Hong Kong offices probed into its illegal operations within the autonomous Chinese territory. Documents, computers and iPads were uh, confiscated in the raid. Five drivers were also arrested on Tuesday over the illegal use of vehicles for hire after undercover police used the Uber app to hail five cars, arresting them after being driven to their destinations. An Uber spokesman for North Asia gave the company's usual reply, we welcome the opportunity to work closely with the authorities towards updated regulations. Sure you are. Who said journalism is dead? Who? Well, tell him he was dead wrong because it simply became a startup venture. NBC Universal officially made a big investment in Vox Media Group Wednesday, putting $200 million on the table to buy a share of the company, bringing its evaluation to a cool billion dollars. NBC also invested $200 million in BuzzFeed under the evaluation of $1.5 billion. BuzzFeed has yet to comment on their new investor, but Vox Media CEO Jim Benkoff said in a press release that NBC Universal is the perfect strategic partner for Vox Media. Vox Media's mission statement is to change perception of journalism using technology. This is how they do it. There's a problem in journalism. We call some of the topics we cover the vegetables or the spinach as if they're, they're, they're gross and people should be reading them, but they're not going to want to. It's a terrible attitude. If we can't take things that are important and, and meaningful in people's lives and make them interesting, that failure is 100% on us as writers. That is entirely our fault. Ezra and Matt and Melissa came to work with us at Vox Media because they knew that we weren't just a media company, we were also a technology company and that we could take their idea, take their vision and actually make it real. Success in somewhat grandiose terms is that we want to create the single greatest resource available for people to understand the issues that are in the news. I can't wait to see if what we think people need is actually what they need. If it's not, we'll change it. We want to have the ability to move fast. It's time for some Israeli tech news and today one sweet startup that wants to change the almighty Adobe and its Photoshop. Israeli startup Lightrix, which develops popular mobile apps Facetune and Enlight, announced Wednesday the closing of a 10 million financing round. The company was founded in 2013 and made a meteoric rise to the top of Apple's US App Store chart from 283 to 2 in only five days. Lightrix also makes photo editing app in light, but is best known for Facetune, which lets users quickly fix and adjust portraits to make them more flattering. Co-founder and CEO Zev Faubman says its new capital will allow Lightrix to continue improving in light and Facetune while launching new products. It's planned to double its team over the next year. Go for it, you guys. Good luck. For something we do every day, most of us don't give much thought to our showers. 
That's certainly not the case for the six people working at San Francisco-based startup Nibia. The team at Nibia try to understand how to make showers consume less water and still feel good. The result is the Nibia showerhead, now in the early days of its Kickstarter campaign, already raising more than a million dollars with an initial goal of just 100,000. It works by atomizing water into millions of small droplets that, the Nibia team says, enable you to use 70% less water than a normal shower. The project is buzzing hard, at least partially because Apple CEO Tim Cook has joined its early group of investors. Now you have a chance to put your money on a cloud of water. Hmm, shower. Imagine being totally embraced by water from the moment you step into your shower. Imagine an experience with water so moving you never want to step out. Your skin feels soft and hydrated. Nebby is about experiencing water in a way that you never have before. To innovate on the shower experience, we had to look outside of the current industry and approach the engineering problem from a completely new angle. The last half century of nozzle technology has completely changed what we can do with droplet sizes and distributions. However, this technology has only been applied to very specialized fields, like rocket engines and medical devices. We use these same tools and technology to develop Nebbia. What we do is atomize streams of water into millions of tiny droplets. By doing this, we can achieve 10 times the surface area of water compared to a regular shower while using a fraction of the volume. I just got out of my first Nebbia shower. It was a totally unique experience and I loved it. I was getting hit with these little water droplets. Yeah, that actually sounds like fun. Hollywood is searching desperately for new franchise ideas, and if its own screenwriters can offer them what they want, they'll search it online. It only took three days for E.B. Ray to move from a Vimeo account to a major production deal with a Hollywood veteran. His proof-of-concept short The Garden, a reimagining of John Milton's Paradise Lost, set against the backdrop of A Decaying Sun, is now Warner's next big hope for a big-budget movie. That's amazing, considering that E.B. Ray is a low-budget director with a six-minute movie. Here is a short clip from his latest discovery. Our son is dying. Only a hemorrhaging star could have done this. The flare was just a hint of things to come. Several years ago, we sent scout teams to comb the galaxy for a life-sustaining planet. But we never heard from any of them again. Then last month, we received a faint signal. We believe it's one of our scout teams. We need you to help us find them. Sorry, I'm not interested. You don't understand, Mr. Lucas. This isn't a request. I didn't think they'd get you to go. I didn't have a choice. They were going to throw me out into the wasteland. Now let's kickstart the world with Didi Hanoch. Good evening, Didi. Good evening, Jason. Uh, let's start. Okay, our first project is um, one that's ludicrously successful. It's a jacket. Okay. So let's take a look and, and then we'll talk about this thing. Yeah, what? Uh, yeah, what's going on with this jacket? Okay, it's a travel jacket, uh, okay. which means it's got all kind of specialized pockets and a hoodie that, that allows you to cover your eyes and little pillows and the neck. And it's not bad looking. They've got a few versions of it, mm -hmm. um, and it's not terribly overpriced. And apparently, that's what you need to do to raise nearly five million dollars. Wow. That's, yeah. What was their offering uh, price? Um, I mean, their goal. The original goal was 20000 Okay. So, uh, yeah, they're, you're probably going to have to see uh, delays in this. 
Okay. Um, as we've seen in, in similar projects, where, where which far, far, far exceeded their goals, um, people are probably going to get this months after they expected to. But um, but what's wrong with the world that that sort of project gets so su successful? Um, marketing works in this world, and and uh, that's what's wrong with it. Was it really well marketed? Yeah, uh, oh. it was. You know, they just took a jacket with a bunch of pockets and said the best travel jacket ever and uh people bought it okay yeah i kind of want it too uh, let's move on to the second project okay uh, our second project is about uh a guy that a lot of people in the world know a little less familiar in israel it's uh bill nye the science guy okay let's, let's take a look, look. Does this scene look familiar to you? Hi, I'm David Alvarado. And I'm Jason Sussberg. We were middle school students in the 1990s when Bill Nye taught us about the rock cycle and climate change. He impacted us in monumental ways. Some chemicals get together, they react. Now that's a chemical reaction. So this has become the most funded documentary uh, project in crowdfunding history. Yes. Why? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that people love Bill Nye. And this is not, you know, a project about somebody who's passed away. They're going to be able to follow the guy for, for months and months and, and get a good idea of his life and, and what's he, what he's doing now and, and what, what made him famous. You know, he became famous with a, a science TV show that was just uh, a lot of fun. So, But, you know, he's... Um God among geeks, yes. but still he's everywhere on the web and on TV. Why do I need a documentary about him? Because you'll see him pop up and, and argue about uh, evolution or, or the weather, uh, you know, or whatever scientific topics uh, are hot right now. Mm -hmm. But this is an in-depth look about a man who's been fighting for, for science and for good for uh, decades now. Good and and a, a really good guy. Good from, for him. From everything we know about him. Let's move on to our third project. Yes, our third project, which is also very geeky. Um, this is a Star Trek fan film. So let's take a look at what they've done and, and we'll get back to it. I sense your disapproval, Saval. Forgive me if I cause offense. There is no offense when none is taken to there. We've known each other far too long for that. I fear the council is making a grave mistake. The vote is cast. Ratification, but a mere formality. Hmm, can they legally make it? Isn't this a uh, copyright trial just waiting to happen? Um, they're using uh, fair, the fair use defense. Uh, in that this is not a commercial project. They don't intend to make any money. Uh, all the money that's being raised from the crowdfunding is there to cover costs. And this is their third crowdfunding, uh, in fact. They've had once to do a short film that was more of a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. They've had a, the second one last year to build a huge sound t stage mm -hmm. to make this film. And now they have one to actually make the film. And people keep giving, giving them money, so... And is this the beginning of the big funded fan fiction? Uh, I definitely believe fan fiction is going to become and is becoming, uh, you know, more of an industry. Um, Amazon has a, a, a revenue sharing program with some authors who get money when people who wrote fanfic of, uh, in their worlds sell their stories. Okay. So, and, and there's a revenue share for both. Okay, let's move on to our last project. Yes, our last project is a, a more of a, a feel-good project and, and one that I really, really hope people support in the few days it has left. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about uh, organizing a dance for Holocaust survivors. Lovely, meaning what? Um, these people are, are people who, who are uh, elderly people and, and who need a bit of fun in their life. And, and the people organizing this event are organizing a fun evening for these guys. They've already... Uh, reached their original goal mm -hmm. but there's you know 
there's the money you need that's for a minimum to make a party yeah, they, and they the more you raise they didn't ask for a lot of money they asked for yeah, 7000 shekels exactly so uh in in the week that's left i i really hope they they more than double this because uh, i think these guys really deserve a good party i do as well and uh Mazaltov for you, Mazaltov, uh, congratulations uh, for your uh, Kickstarter campaign that got funded. Yes, we got a, a 110% and I'm very pleased. Yeah, was it an easy ride? <laughs> no, it was a tough emotional month with a lot of refreshing, but uh, it, it's over and, and I'm quite happy. Yes, it's not easy to do it. We talk about it uh, a lot, but it's not easy to do it. Thank you very much, Didi. Thank you. And thank you very much, viewers, for watching us. We'll be back uh, uh, tomorrow with a brand new show of uh, The Tube. We'll be No, tomorrow is the weekend. Haha, <laughs> we'll have the weekend edition uh, with the best stories that made our week. Silly me. But we'll be back on Monday with a regular show. Uh, of uh, the tube and uh, go on Kickstarter search these campaigns if you like them I like the watery thing and the jacket thing and that's it i24news.tv look me up bye